put out one of these in their area because uh, they're going to try to shut the web down. And as print dies, there'll be a vacuum we can fill, what I call print 2.0. So I got a lot of other plans. The worst crowd. Thank you again for joining us, ladies and gentlemen, as we wage war on corruption and crash through the lies and disinformation. I am Alex Jones, your host. The websites are infowars.com. And we're also uh, streaming video at prisonplanet.tv. We also have um, prisonplanet.com, not just prisonplanet.tv. In the next hour, we're joined by William N. Gregg. WillGregg.com is his website. He writes for the New American Magazine. He's produced uh, quite a few excellent films that I'm a big uh, fan of, the information. He's also an author. Uh, he wrote uh, America's Engineered Decline for the John Birch Society. It's an excellent book. I've read it myself. And I wanted to get him on when he talked about the cowardice of drones. I saw an article he wrote last week and how it's converting everything over uh, to these faceless killers and his pure dehumanization. You know, people are worried about uh, you know, uh, unions taking their jobs or vice versa, and we're all taught to compete with each other. What about computers, robots, war making? Because this is where everything's going. It won't be humans under the sea. They're now admitting for decades they've had robot uh, uh, vessels on the water and under the water, submarines in space, in the air, and on the ground. And these can follow the orders of a tiny technocratic elite. Notice the banksters that have hijacked Europe through insider crony fraud and, and, and monopoly uh, scams. They call themselves technocrats. So this is the big issue. I, I, we'll get to that at the bottom of the hour. But I want to cover some other issues because we started seeking to get Mr. Gregg on last week. The shooting hadn't happened Sunday. And I noticed for LewRockwell.com, uh, and for his own side, he wrote an excellent article about how the Sikhs are constantly getting shot, beat up, uh, beat up by police because people see the bright turban. Most Muslims don't actually wear that. And by the way, Sikhs are not Muslims. They tend to get in a lot of fights with Muslims over in India. But the point is, is that it's a different group completely. Uh, but people see the beard. They see the uh, you know religious uh, headgear and it's over. They die. Uh, and uh, those famous cases of cops beating the daylights out of them for no reason, just because they just, you know, you see somebody with the striking beard and the, and the bright turban, it's, it's clobbering time. Uh, and so he wrote an article about that. But I have to say this, in the aftermath of the shooting, I'll ask him a hard question and put him on the spot right out of the gates here. If we have criminal elements of our government, and anybody can just type in secret testing on U.S. troops, lethal testing on U.S. troops, lethal testing on foster children, a radiation of foster children. Thousands of U.S. foster children, the Department of Energy admits, were radiated to death in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Uh, 110,000 Israeli children were radiated, many of them to death, and the ringworm children. Department of Energy paid Israel to kill their own people. And that's on Israeli TV. Just type it into YouTube. You'll see the TV shows about it. I mean, we're talking about frying kids' brains. Uh, the ones that were lucky died right away. Some are still alive today, mentally retarded, no hair, you know, 50 years old. This is the type of stuff that goes on. And so if they would do that, shoot black men up with syphilis, uh, you know, all the rest of it. Uh, the UN's been caught giving foster children just last year, live polio. It was all on purpose, folks. And that's just a minor footnote. All oh, 67,000 kids got paralyzed. It's no big deal. 2011 UN program. Why wouldn't they stage a shooting? I mean, if they stage Fast and Furious and ship guns into Mexico to blame the Second Amendment, that killed thousands conservatively in Mexico, hundreds here in the U.S., including three police officers, one of them a Border Patrol. Some say six. We can prove three. I mean, I mean, I mean, we all know Oklahoma City had government fingerprints, the very same crew that's in power today. So I'm going to bring that up to you and, and, and then just get into the shooting itself. Look at how they're hyping it. Look at all the draconian gun bills they've got right now. Look at how the guy was in Army psychological operations and then suddenly becomes a white supremacist, just like Elohim City and just how the feds ran that in 95. So there's the big uh, question for uh, William Gregg. Will, good to have you here uh, with us on the show. Am I out of line if governments have been caught staging events like Gulf of Tonkin, Ajax, Gladio, our own government, 
am I out of line with the opportune timing of this? And the witnesses saying they saw four men with guns shooting people and the head of the Sikh community, the president of the group, saying there were men casing a joint before. I mean, or should I just believe one guy who happens to be dead, he did it and he's an evil, uh, evil white guy. So now we need the war on terror uh, to be shifted onto conservative white guys. Alex, I think what you're describing is well within the compass of the official cynicism of the government that presumes to rule us. It's a question of ability and not disposition when you're talking about a hypothetical scenario involving state shootings or atrocities of this kind, because as you correctly point out, there have been many instances of false flag terrorist attacks and similar atrocities that have been perpetrated in the past for reasons of tuning the public atmosphere for a proposed policy change that requires the dislocation of comfortable assumptions, the sudden violent shock that can create a new consensus. And to that list that you mentioned of these horrible experiments involving the infection of people with various diseases or other types of assaults on their persons, you can add what happened in Guatemala just after World War II. There was a eugenesis program that just became a matter of public record just a couple of years ago. And it's no secret that this technocratic elite that you described exercises what it considers to be a proprietary claim on the rest of us. They consider us to be their subjects, not only in terms of what we generate, what we earn through our exertions in our industry, but also with respect to our physical person, which explains, among other things, the Obamacare monstrosity. They really don't recognize any limit to the power that they presume to exercise over any of us. So when you're dealing with somebody who comes from the background that Mr. Page apparently did, and you have an incident of this sort that has an uncomfortable congruence to the scenarios that have been pitched by the DHS for a number of years, Actually, going back before the Obama administration into the Clinton administration, you saw scenarios of this kind being peddled by what was then sort of the INCOA Department of Homeland Security, the FBI in particular, with its Project Megado report in 1999-2000. They've been tuning the atmosphere for the better part of two decades now to anticipate this advent of so-called lone wolf terrorism that would implicate the social cohort they call the radical right. So when things like this happen, and once again, you have to take into account what the FBI has been doing for the last 10 years in terms of staging little melodramas, homeland security theater, false flag terrorist plots involving Muslims, in which you have people that the federal government refers to as terrorism facilitators. That's actually in the legal documents that refer to certain people employed by the FBI as terrorism facilitators. We have instance after instance in which the Muslims have been manipulated this way. It shouldn't surprise us at all if we find out that at least some of these episodes, some of these incidents, bear the same fingerprints and have been orchestrated for the same purposes, particularly, as you point out, in light of the drive, the accelerating drive for civilian disarmament. Exactly. They've staged up before. They uh, stand to gain from it. It has all the telltale signs. We would be naive to not look at this as being at least provocateur, and the evidence, I believe, points towards completely staged with the timing and all the rest of it with the Southern Poverty Law Center fluttering around. Sure, and the television ad that was playing on Sunday capitalizing on what had happened in Aurora and then what had happened in Tucson back in 2011. Once again, I talk about the idea that there's a certain harmony, a certain convergence of events here that drive us in a certain direction. And there are people who do, to the best of their ability, and their ability, I think, is rather formidable, try to script large-scale events of this sort or to capitalize on things that happen that are compatible with their agenda. If you're dealing in the person of Mr. Page with somebody who simply went off on a bender after being trained to kill people, he's a disgruntled former federal employee. That's his most important affiliation here. Everything else is speculative. We do know that this guy, like Timothy McVeigh, like the other people who surrounded McVeigh, the others unknown, who've conveniently been ushered off the stage, uh, these people were federal employees or former federal employees. Uh, take the uh, Joker killer. Uh, all federal grants, special yeah. Air Force psychiatrist assigned just to him. Uh, people reporting multiple shooters, but that doesn't mean, again, it's always people on government payroll or PSYOP chiefs or sheep dipped uh, Pentagon folks like McVeigh that do this. Or in the case of the accused Aurora shooter, once again, you got the connection to DARPA, which is very much the past masters of manipulating both technology and psychology. 
to bring about certain exactly it's uh, always the same mo complex yeah it's always the same mo it's always the same timing uh that said then shifting away from that bottom line giving our liberties up isn't going to protect us from nuts the answer is more guns uh, to protect ourselves and that's how the american people are responding we're about to go to break but Will, where would you say the state of the New World Order is right now? Are things going well for them or badly? I think in terms of what they achieve or what they seek to achieve with respect to the consolidation of financial and political power and also military power, things are going very well for them as they go increasingly poorly for us. We live in a relationship of inversion with the people who presume to rule us. They're... When you're talking about particularly the financial element of this elite, they're giddily buying up most of the afflicted farmland in the United States, positioning themselves to act in the same way that the much denigrated preppers and survivalists behave. The difference is they're able to do it with entire uh, huge tracts of farmland as opposed to having food storage. They can simply buy the farms. And the same thing is happening in South America. They've been behaving this way since 2008. Many of the people who, for public consumption, the sale preppers and survivalists, the people in, in hedge funds and such like, are doing the same thing on a massive, monumentally larger scale. That's something that is to their advantage. It's to their advantage that they're able to manipulate public opinion through the use of events of this sort, whether staged or incidental. And, of course, it's to their advantage that we have wars and rumors of wars uh, propagating overseas. War, of course, is something that's very conducive to molding the public mind into a fashion where people are receptive to the idea of surrendering their liberties and surrendering their individuality in the service of something supposedly larger than themselves. So as things go poorly for us, and increasingly poorly, things go increasingly better for our self-appointed rulers. That's, that's right. Killing is, killing is their business. Business is good. Exactly. William Gregg is our guest. We're going to come back and uh, get into the uh, chic angle of this. Then we're going to cover drones. Stay with us. We'll die, we'll die for the system. For this is not William Gregg is our guest. He writes for LewRockwell.com, New American Magazine. And, of course, we also post his fine work at Infowars.com. You can find his books and videos that are extremely powerful, like Global Gun Grab. He's, <laughs> he's got that on the whole gun grab at his website, willgreg.com. Going back in the short segment we have, next long segment, we're going to get into drones and, well, really the end, the end of humanity. That's what Bill Joy, 12 years ago, called it in Wired Magazine. He called it uh, Why the Future Doesn't Need Us. We're going to be breaking that down. But I noticed you wrote a story, uh, I guess it was yesterday, uh, breaking down the fact that Sikhs and upfront Sunday, I said this could have been some lunatic because there's such you know Islamophobia where people I talk to think Muslims, you know, every Muslim wants to kill you out there. While Western governments bring them in at record numbers to create that clash of civilizations, it's all a divide and conquer uh, mechanism. But the fact that the Sikhs. Uh, you know, are wearing that archetypal dress that almost no Muslims wear uh, because it is a Central Asian dress, you know, really a medieval dress. Uh, and when cops or anybody sees these, it, it, it's almost like a bass fish seeing a big lure go through the water. They just go crazy. Uh, and uh, you broke down some cases of the, the amazing abuse these Sikhs have uh, put up with. The one case that I thought was so striking happened in Joliet, Illinois, Illinois, forgive me, about five years ago, March 11th of 2007, there's a fellow, and I'm sure I'm going to mispronounce his name, who is a Gulf War veteran. His name is Kuldip Singh Nag. He had served in the first Gulf War. He had a bronze star for serving in the military. And for some reason, over the couple of years that he lived in this residential neighborhood there in Illinois, uh, Mr. Nag and his family had attracted the ire of some of their neighbors who quite possibly were acting on the perception that they were dealing with interlopers from the Arab world. They had incidents of vandalism where their garage was defaced, and a couple of times somebody fired a BB gun into their property. At some point in early 2007, somebody filed an anonymous complaint that Mr. Nag had an inoperable van on his property. And under a municipal ordinance there in Joliet, apparently 